Have you ever come across a video with like a little Minecraft character running around, a guy talking super loud at you with Undertale music in the background? What about one where they got their little PNG tuber at the bottom reading comments and they're doing parkour in the background and there's still Undertale music? If the answer is yes, then I'm afraid you've come across a Minecraft content creator, or MCC for short. Currently, those kinds of videos are the best way for an MCC to grow their brand. However, that was not always the case. <clears throat> you see, the popular Minecrafter status is one that has been sought after since the days of Captain Sparkles, who is still going somehow. But just a short time ago, there was a shift. The creators and videos you see now are the survivors, the victors of a much more turbulent period of Minecraft content creation. A period made up of starry-eyed high schoolers who thought they were destined to make it big. Extreme unoriginality, performative activism, and worst of all, clout chasing. This turbulent era has remained in obscurity for far too long. It's time we journeyed into the depths of Minecraft YouTube Twitter. That acronym is very misleading. It's not actually just Minecraft YouTube. I don't know why it was called that. Um, well, actually, I do, but like, it's not. That's neither here nor there. We're just gonna move on. But uh, what exactly do I mean when I'm talking about MCYT Twitter? Well, back in 2020, there was a virus going around. And for our story, the most important thing it did was give people a little more free time to be on the internet. Sometime in May of that year, a group of niche internet micro celebrities decided to start a Minecraft server to play on with their newfound free time. That server just so happened to be called the Dream SMP. And of course, it got extremely popular really fast. All of a sudden, Minecraft was a new hot way to get popular again. Fans consolidated on Twitter, equipped with new inspiration to start their streaming careers. However, there is just a slight problem in everybody's master plans. To be a popular streamer, you actually had to be funny. Yeah, so believe it or not, a bunch of young people who just decided to be streamers on a whim aren't exactly gonna know how to keep a crowd entertained, let alone tell a joke that's not about somebody's mother. And I think some of them might have known that. Early in MCYT Twitter's life, the most popular people were the ones who just lifted their entire personalities from Dream SMP members. And when those people got popular, other people took their personalities. So in effect, it all kind of homogenized into like a blanket MCYT personality type, which later evolved into TikTok's comfort streamer archetype. For example, have you ever heard a TikTok comfort streamer type talk about committing crimes such as arson, tax evasion, or violence against orphans? Well, barring the tax evasion stuff, those jokes are lifted directly from Technoblade. I was the second worst thing to ever happen to those orphans. Oh, Officer, oh. I drop kicked that child in self-defense. <laughs> what about the frequent use of the word pog? While it was generally a staple of Twitch at the time, most people a part of the MCYT community picked it up straight from Tommy and its earlier vocabulary. Pog champ, pog champ, so pog champ. God. When Bernie says a good point and the whole chat is pog champ. Now, the your mom jokes, I really don't know where those came from. I, they might have just like originated naturally. I don't have any, I don't, I don't know. So as more people picked up these traits, there was also a few sort of unspoken rules that start to crop up as well. One, you can only stream on Twitch. And two, you can only play Minecraft. Twitch, a notoriously bad platform for growth. And Minecraft, the literal most popular and oversaturated game on the planet. Barring an extremely lucky shout out or something like that, you were practically set up for failure. But people still believed in their heart of hearts that even though the chance was small, it would be them that would make it out. And so they kept trying. And a lot of them kept failing, and but they kept trying, and then they failed some more. I spent so long on this video, why did it flop? Thought a creator. Is it because I used the default Premiere Pro to home a font for all my subtitles? No, it can't be that. It can't be. Is it because I didn't mix my audio and the game was way too loud? Nah, can't be. Can't be that. Is it because it's another one of those generic How I Ruined Biko SMP videos? No, it can't be. It can't be any of that. It's gotta be because everybody is racist. Everybody, I'm talking everybody else is racist. That's, that's the only reason. Yeah. 
It was an unfortunate reality in MCYT Twitter, but the minority you were in was basically utilized like your only weapon. Not getting good numbers on Twitch? Easy. Twitch hates gay people. SMP owner kicked you out? Because they're racist. As a result of this, there would be tons of Twitter posts along the lines of like, oh, supports POC streamers or mall streamers of color. Reply with your cash app or your Twitch or like anything else. I mean, a good sentiment, sure, but it was just like a little unnecessary. Now don't get me wrong, there was a ton of racism online, and in a lot of cases, people of color have a harder time blowing up the same way white British people do for some reason. But as previously mentioned, on MCYT Twit, you were basically doomed to fail. Like, using me as an example, I had a Twitch channel, and it flopped. But it didn't flop because I was black. It flopped because I didn't stream on it. But on every single one of them posts, I was right there. With my Cash App, with my Twitch, I was right there. But anyways, in a lot of cases, when people posted those support POC streamers things, they didn't even post them for the sake of the people they were trying to help. As previously mentioned, MCYT Twit was home to a lot of performative activism. So like, after the death of George Floyd, there was a ton of posts that just asked black people to post their Cash Apps. Like yeah, a huge injustice was dealt, however, at the time, I don't think that was hurting anybody's bottom lines. And if it was, I guarantee it was definitely not the Minecraft streamers who were suffering financially from that. I'm gonna be honest. Additionally, around that time, there was a metric ton of threads and these things called cards. Now these threads and these cards were like little aesthetic presentations about really serious issues. Like it would be this nice pink like with hearts and a cool background and it'd be like why millions of people are dying in in Kentucky or something. It'd be like it, it like crazy dissonance, like crazy dissonance. And people could just retweet them and look like they actually had a cause to support when in reality they like didn't even read the threats. Like proven factually they did not read the threat because there were these like trick threads going around and they'd be like oh x people read other people retweet and then inside the thread it'd be a just a single reply being like I want to see how many people will, will just retweet this without reading it and it was a lie it worked it, like it it hook line and sinker. If one good thing came out of all these people really wanting to look like they were charitable were the actual charity event. See, when the larger creators did charity events, their performance numbers skyrocketed. Like whenever they did a subathon or any sort of long-term money raising thing, it worked, it was really effective. So a lot of the smaller creators were like, hey, why wouldn't it work for me? Now, of course, only the bigger, smaller creators were actually able to pull something like that off, but still. The thing with charity events was that as long as the person did enough research into the charity they were trying to donate to, even if the whole event was just so their numbers would go up or just so that they would look better, money is still going to a good call. Some of the larger charity events I remember in my time on MCYT Twit were Unity MC, which was supposed to be a mini games event, like it's gonna be a little confusing, MCC, that was supposed to donate to four different charities after it finished. Um, I don't remember if it's actually like ended up happening or not. Um, there was supposed to be this Bed Wars game for the Trevor Project, which never happened. I was a part of that. And there is Tournaments for Top, which is actually still going, and they donate to trans charities. Unfortunately, Nobody ever donated to the most important charity of all, my bank account. I posted my links to every single one of those little threads, every single one, and not a dime, not a dime went to, you know what? I know why. I think I know why. I think I know why. It's because everybody's racist. It's because they're all racist. They all hate black people. Another part that was and still is extremely important to being a Minecraft creator are SMPs. SMPs were the key to success for quite a lot of people. Most SMPs started one of two ways. Either after a private server of just a few friends becomes public, where it usually goes downhill pretty swiftly from there, or engineered servers that just kind of retread on gimmicks of a more popular server, which is, you know, kind of a theme here. Usually servers of the second type were mostly just for clout, which is why I'm going to call them clout SMPs. There was this one server I was a part of back in the day that was just a clone of SMP Earth. The same web map system and everything. And it was called Planet SMP. 
Now, the people on Planet SMP were mostly people of, like, a little more popularity. However, like I said, I got in. While I would love to think I got in because of my, you know, banger video application, there was another reason, unfortunately. You see, on their application, they would ask you to submit the social media platform which you're most proud of. My platform of choice was YouTube. You know, back in that day, I had just a little bit of clout on YouTube. Just a little bit, just like 200 subs or something like that. And if I had anything lower than that, they would have surely denied me. Just like how people didn't like being seen as racist or homophobic, people did not like their SMPs being seen as clout SMPs. So if given a little more time, Planet SMP would have probably been called out for that. If, of course, it wasn't called out for something different and shut down that way. I was also a part of a few non-clout SMPs. One called Donning, which was an origin SMP, which I had a fun time on. And another one called Rise, which was one of those friend SMP turned popular, which I have a few stories from that I'm going to tell probably in another video. Being popular on MCYT Twit had its ups and downs. On the upside, you had more influence, you could make more friends, more connections, and you could just have more fun, really. On the downside, there was a lot more people looking for cracks and waiting for you to mess up. Sometimes, people just didn't want others to succeed because they weren't, personally. But in this section, um, we're not talking about any petty crimes or anything. All this stuff is some pretty serious stuff. The MCYT community ran young, like fresh out of 8th grade young, or younger, and the pseudo-famous people were just a little bit older than that. So, um, when some of them got a taste of fame and thought they were untouchable, they did some, 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 um, hmm. And needless to say, there was a lot of early 20-year-olds talking to high schoolers inappropriately. It was a common theme. A really, really common theme. By far, one of the worst cases was when a developer behind some of those gimmick server plugins was called out for his sexual harassment tendencies. You see, he would get drunk and text really weird stuff to people who really did not want to see it. When all of it came out, he didn't handle it well either. He just changed his profile picture and renamed his Twitter name to I'm sorry and then disappeared for about two months. After that, he made a new Twitter and Twitch and tried to come back, but this time in Spanish. Allegedly. Then, when he was caught out again, he replied to a tweet and said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can excuse myself. Trying to address this is only going to make it worse and worse. I don't want to try and fight for my name. I give up. I'm just going to leave for now. I have to change myself. Basically, all of his apologies were like that, where he just talked about himself and talked about how bad it was for him instead of the people he actually, you know, harassed. Another case was a guy who went by the username Simon's Life. Now, Simon was extremely prolific in the small streamer community. His Twitter account was very large, and that was like a free pass to basically do whatever he wanted. He carried himself like the Mr. Beast of Minecraft Twitter. He was even the leader of one of the popular SMPs called SMP Life, or Life SMP, depending on the order, which was like the equivalent of something like Lifesteal, or if we're going even before that, Twitch SMP, or SMP On Air, something like that. And to support him, he had a real company backing his moves called Bisect Hosting. He could like summon it like a stand whenever any event he wanted to do needed hosting. Basically, to us, he was like the real deal of celebrity. However, just because a bunch of Minecraft loving teens think you're famous doesn't mean you actually are. Because in reality, he had botted a majority of his followers and had just been smooth talking his way to the rest of his success. But as you might guess, that's not all he was doing because there were minors on his life SMP. After it all came out, he tried posting one of those generic twit longer responses, but it was like literally the most generic apology that could have ever been written. If you were to take all other twit longers and like average them together into an AI, that's what you would get. After he realized things were not going to go his way, he privated his Twitter and disappeared. However, he's still actually posting tweets to this day. I know this because I'm actually in his private Twitter, and I don't know how long that's going to last after this video, but um, all he posts are those really generic like, oh, Twitter changed the color of the like button, like to see, or like this tweet to see a cool animation. Just farming likes, 
It makes sense that he's still clout chasing to the very end though, because the grind truly never stops. In between some of the more higher profile cases, there were still a few instances of when people got canceled for ableism, racism, homophobia, all that kind of stuff. There was even a streamer I saw who blew up, got into controversy, and fell off the face of the earth before their first real stream. The only thing I saw them do was a sleeping stream where they weren't even on camera and the sounds weren't real. It's like they were going for some sort of MCYT small streamer speed run. I mean, they really did everything in the book to get canceled though. Like, I mean, all the marks were hit. It would have been 100%, honestly. Now, me personally, I wouldn't call people doing really bad stuff, drama, but on MTYT Twit, that's really all it was. And sometimes the constant drama starts to weigh on people, especially when people are talking about how your friend just got canceled. That pressure, in conjunction with the monotony of playing Minecraft over and over again for like 100 hours straight, resulted in a lot of the more famous people burning out and disappearing off the face of the earth. Some people would just get bored and stop posting, other people would have some sort of like going away stream, and other people would just have a single tweet and it would just say, I quit, with a little link to a tweet longer. Honestly, I can't blame those people for leaving. It was a very toxic community and the way it was going wasn't even sustainable anyway. I mean, quarantine wasn't gonna last forever. People had to go back to school, they're like work and stuff. They wouldn't have time to stream anymore. People had to move on with their lives. And so move on they did. MCYT Twit is definitely no longer in its prime. And the people you'll see there are mostly completely different from back in my day, I guess. And while it was a little embarrassing and a little cringe for some of the people involved, I think it did actually serve a pretty important purpose. Quarantine era MCYT Twit was like the middle school for content creators, you know. A period of change, but a period of a lot of really embarrassing mistakes. I'm not speaking from experience, I've never done anything embarrassing in my entire life. Some people discovered what worked for them, some people discovered what really did not work for anybody, and a lot of people discovered that maybe content creation was just not for them. My one hope is that the people involved were able to look back on their cringy behavior, the performative activism, the clout chasing, and understand kind of what went wrong and how to improve on their own things. Recently, there's been a few streamers who have decided to return to content creation, hopefully with a healthier and more informed outlook on their whole creation process. And hopefully, without the pressures from the community, they'll now be able to make stuff that they want just because they want to. Speaking of pressure and drama and all this stuff, um, the last thing I want to do with this video is dig up like three-year-old drama for no reason. So, really, if you did something bad and this in this video, no hard feelings. Unless you were in that last part with all the like the, the child predator stuff. I mean, that's 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 on you. Um, you should be you should be out of here. You should be in jail somewhere. Honestly, like. <laughs>